Last year, on the last week of July, a spy movie competes against a movie with Christina Applegate in it. Now, this year, on the last week of July, a spy movie competes against a movie with Christina Applegate in it. Either this is too much of a coincidence, or it could be the work of oh, the Illuminati. Hello everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here to review Jason Bourne. I got this camp at my event screening for this film, so yeah. So Jason Bourne stars Matt Damon, Alicia Vikander, Julia Stiles, and Tom Lee Jones. The film is written and directed by Paul Greengrass, and it is the fourth installment in the Matt Damon series, and the fifth installment in just the Bourne franchise in general. So Jason Bourne is about Jason Bourne now being caught and now being chased and being on the run once again after going many years of being out hiding after what happened at the end of the Bourne Ultimatum. And he has to uncover something from his past. Yes, it is the same formula as the other Bourne series, but what can you expect? It's the Bourne franchise. So when I went to Jason Bourne, I was really excited for this film. I couldn't wait. This film had me absolutely pumped because I am a huge fan of each of the franchise. Born, I Born Identity, Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum, and yes, the Bourne Legacy. I'm actually a fan of the Bourne Legacy as well. I actually think that's a very underrated film. And I'm really hoping one day we could get a movie where Jason Bourne and Aaron Cross could team up together. Paul Greengrass writes this film this time around, however, because the one that would helm the scripts for these other films are really Tony Gilroy. Tony Gilroy does not write the script for this film like he has done with the other Bourne movies. So this time around, Paul Greengrass is doing both the writing and the direct. And coming out of Jason Bourne, unfortunately, this movie, in my opinion, is a massive disappointment. Jason Bourne is the weakest in the Matt Damon Bourne franchise, and just in general, the weakest Bourne movie ever. Because like I said, I actually liked Legacy. Of course, there are some good things about this film, however, and definitely by far the best thing coming out of Jason Bourne is the character himself, Jason Bourne. He's still this very interesting character. You still care about this character. You still root for this character. And Matt Damon still absolutely brings it as Jason Bourne, 100%. He has the physicality of Jason Bourne. He still has the energy of Jason Bourne. You can still see Matt Damon having the passion for his character. And you know what else is great to see back? Julia Stiles as Nikki. It's so great to see her back here because this is a character we followed in the other installments. Alicia Vikander, who I thought did a very good job as the character of Heather. I thought Heather was actually a very interesting character. I wish we could have known more about the Heather character, I will say that. But for what we got of this character, I thought she was actually very interesting. Especially as the movie is going along without spoiling anything, of course. I just thought it was very cool. Tommy Lee Jones. Great to see him. He plays the CIA director in your nice Tom Lee Jones form. He's great. He's Tom Lee Jones, but he's freaking great. Some of the action sequences I thought were very well filmed. I thought sometimes they were just fun to watch. They were a little bit intense. They were well filmed enough. The cinematography is really really beautiful in this film. In a way, it does look a little bit different from the other Bourne movies. And speaking of Paul Greengrass, I did think sometimes he really directed this film very well. He really does put you in the atmosphere as Paul Greengrass does best. Also, without spoiling anything, of course, there is a story involving Jason Bourne's past that I found to be intriguing. It's actually really the only thing about this film that intrigued me, if I have to 
be honest. And I found myself invested whenever we got to that point in the film. The ending of the movie was really good. And I know I keep saying this, but I'm not spoiling anything. Just where the movie ended, I was all like, oh yeah. That's how you end a Bourne movie. That's exactly how you end it. And I will say, I know I'm hearing reviews say this is a huge thing. It's actually not a huge thing, but there is this subplot regarding your own privacy, how social media can be today, and all that stuff. And honestly, I didn't even find that to be a big issue. It was just there for a few scenes. And I thought for a few scenes, I didn't really mind it. I thought it served for the story in some way and it didn't really bother me just because it's just something that's for a few scenes. So I didn't really mind that the movie went for its social commentary on social media. I actually thought that was actually brilliant. Now, unfortunately, this is where I have to start being negative because I had a lot of problems with Jason Bourne. Like, if you like the movie, if you love the movie, that's awesome because I actually do know some people that legitimately love the movie or like the movie, but I didn't because one of my biggest, biggest issues with Jason Bourne is the storyline. The storyline is nowhere near as intriguing, as engaging as the other installments. And that's honestly odd to say because each of the Bourne movies until this came out, they've all really intrigued me with their storytelling. I liked where they would go throughout each of their stories. And in this film, it just wasn't that great. Not terrible, just not that great. Good. It's just very, very mediocre storytelling, and it's so all over the place. I'm not going to go into any details, but one minute you'll see Jason Bourne here, then there's a situation with him here, then here, then he's talking to someone there, then we get to Tommy Jones and Alicia Vikander. The movie just goes all over over the place. It's honestly a messy film in my opinion. Just too many things in this film are going on at once for me to get involved in the storytelling. Oh man, this next flaw really disappoints me to say, but most of the action in this film was not that great. And here's the problem. Now, Paul Greengrass, you know, for Supremacy and Ultimatum, he's used this shaky cam style. And I thought in those films, yes, granted, and just a few times in both films, yes, it can be a little distracting, but for the most part, I actually thought he mastered the shaky cam style well, because I'm able to see what's going on. But for some reason, Paul Greengrass got way too out of control with the shaky cam because I couldn't see what was happening. The movie was just shaking up way too much for the majority. When the action is actually steady for a good one or two seconds, it looks great. But when the movie is so shaky, it takes me out of the experience. He handled it very well in Captain Phillips, one of my favorite movies of 2013. And in this film he just fell so flat with the shaky cam and it's because of that the action was not that exciting not that thrilling not even that memorable and as I was watching this film I actually noticed a few of my audience members at my advanced screening for this film they actually had to walk out and breathe because I can tell they were actually starting to get nauseous during the action scenes. Something that surprised me too about this film is that some of the dialogue is actually very clunky. The movie does have some dialogue that really isn't written all that well. I was also really shocked that a couple of the actors in this film were very bad. There were actually a couple of really bad acting in Jason Bourne that I didn't really expect. Of course, because I can't really spoil anything, I don't want to get into any details what who those actors were but there were a couple of actors that I thought acted very poorly. Vincent Castle plays this assassin and unfortunately I didn't really find him all that great as the assassin. The movie does try to develop him which I really appreciate but I feel like even with the development he still wasn't that strong of a character. He just felt like another assassin in my opinion and I just didn't think there was 
anything to the character. He was just there to just go out and assassinate Jason Bourne. Like, at least with the other assassins, even though that was the same situation with them, they were at least intriguing to me. But in this film, this assassin really did not intrigue me. When it comes to the execution, the film was not that great. I felt like the execution could have been a whole lot better. And it's executed as another action movie. Instead of this film having the complexity of the other Matt Damon born movies, it's just executed as this one-dimensional action film that has some dialogue scenes, but for the most part, it's just one action piece after another action piece. And honestly, I would be fine with that if I was actually invested. You can be a generic movie. You can be. You could have all of these things happening. As long as I'm invested, I'm okay with that. With Jason Bourne, however, that's not the case. And my last problem with Jason Bourne, and it's yet another major issue I have with this film, is a certain situation that happens in the opening action sequence. Those that have seen this film know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to spoil what it is, but when this certain situation actually happened, I actually sat in the theater going, Are you freaking kidding me? Seriously, you really had to do that. Wow. And not only that, but that situation was also extremely predictable. And it was just totally unnecessary for that to even happen. Overall, you guys, I know from the way I'm describing the negatives, it sounds like I hate this film. I don't. I don't hate Jason Bourne. I really don't. I think this is a fine movie. It's okay. The reason I just sounds so mad is because I'm frustrated. There's a difference between just straight up hating a movie and just being frustrated with the movie. I'm frustrated because this movie had a lot of potential to honestly be at least a good movie. I want this to be at least good. Yes, Matt Damon still kicks ass as Jason Bourne. Julia Stiles is still great as Nikki. Tommy Jones, Alicia Vikander, they're still great. Some of the action is well done. Some of the direction is well done. But unfortunately, most of the action is so nauseating to watch. Most of Paul Greengrass's direction is not that good. And the storyline is not that well executed. It's not intriguing. The only thing that's really intriguing about this film is Matt Damon's past, and that's about it. Other than that, I honestly found myself bored for the majority of Jason Bourne, and you don't want to be bored during a Bourne movie. This is one of the most disappointing movies of 2016. Maybe even the most. I really have to look at all the other films that disappointed me this year. Like I said, I didn't hate Jason Bourne. But man, oh man, it is a massive disappointment. And I have to give Jason Bourne two out of four stars. Comment down below, let me know. What did you think about Jason Bourne? If you liked it, if you loved it, that's great. I just didn't feel that way. But where does Jason Bourne rank with the other Bourne movies? Yes, that does include Bourne Legacy. And also, you guys, I actually did get to collab with one of my good YouTube friends, Justin Watches Movies, to review the Bourne Ultimatum. And I'm very happy to be reviewing it. So if you guys want to check out that review, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I was born to have Tiger Power.